basically at the beginning i'm just going to show you how to make a solution is this this is apparently cereal now i don't know what cereal that is because it looks absolutely nasty but it was in the um in our prep room and so it might be like a thousand years old or something but basically what you're going to do is if it's a solid like this you want to use the pestle and mortar to kind of grind it down so use these two to grind it down if it's a solid i'm going to do that now so I've grinded that down into smaller pieces, as small as I could get it. Then what I'm going to do, quite simply, is I'm going to transfer it into a small beaker. So that's been transferred into the small beaker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add water. Now the water that I'm going to use is in this bottle here, and that is deionized water. Deionized water is basically pure water. It has H2O and nothing else in it. So there's nothing else that could affect the experiment. So I'm going to add the deionized water. You don't need too much, right? But I've got, just to show you, about that much. And what you're gonna take is you're gonna take your stirring rod and you're going to give it a good mix so that you can get as much of the uh, content of that food out of the food itself. So we can get fat, if there's fat present, sugar, or carbohydrates so I'm just gonna give that a stir and then I'll be right back so I've given that a good stir the next uh, process is quite simply we're going to filter it through the conical flask and the funnel to do that we're going to need filter paper so here is my filter paper now in order to um, fold this correctly you fold it in half and then fold it in half again and it'll look something like this so that's how that will look so you've got like three sections on this side here and only one flap on that side so you put that in your funnel so you place that in your funnel now it won't go in properly but that's fine once you add your solution in um, it will hold it in place so you might want to just keep it in place using your hands to begin with like i said you're going to pour in your solution the solution will go through but the remaining residue will remain on top so i've uh put it on top i've placed my solution on top the residue is remaining and what we have is a solution with the nutrients in whatever they might be and we're going to be um finding out whether certain nutrients are present or not and i'll show you how to do that in a bit now if the food solution is a big solid piece like this supposed cereal was then that's fine you grind it up however if it's a finer powder like flour then uh, or this milk powder here right then you don't need to grind it up because it's already ground then all you're going to do is you're going to transfer a spatula of that into here add your deionized water and stir but remember to make sure that this has been washed down ideally with deionized water uh, so that you don't have any contaminants on it otherwise it'll give you a false positive result so i've just added the dry milk powder i'm going to get my deionized water and just uh, pour that in All right again you don't need too much just enough that will dissolve in and of course i've just washed my stirring rod with deionized water and now i'm just going to stir and mix uh, as much as possible so i'll do that now uh, so i've mixed that through as thoroughly as possible and now once again i'm going to filter it through now i'm going to use an absolutely clean conical flask however if there's not enough equipment you can just wash this out with deionized water uh, wash the funnel out and um, then use reuse that but i'm going to use a new one again it's the same procedure funnel uh, on top filter paper and just uh, filter it through so I'm going to take my new solution of dried milk powder and place it into my new conical flask so again once you pour a bit of the solution on filter paper will remain in place and what you're going to have is the residue once again staying on top and the uh, filtrate of the solution coming through so it's coming through bit by bit so I wanted to show you how to make the solutions first. Next, what we're going to look at is how to test for the different things that we are testing for. Okay, now just to make sure that um, we have, we don't forget what's what, I'm going to take this uh, board marker and just label this with the cereal and label this with dried milk powder so I don't forget. 
so as you can see I've labeled it up so that way I don't get them confused or mixed up etc 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 okay okay so the three chemicals that we are using are Benedict solution uh, and basically with Benedict solution it's a blue color and this test tests for simple sugars okay so this is going to be testing for sugars then we have Bayouret solution uh, this will be testing for proteins and finally we have ethanol which will be testing for uh, fats now of course ethanol is highly flammable so you want to avoid placing it near flames okay but we probably won't be using bunsen burners uh, i'll show you an easier way to do this now before we test the food solutions what we need to do is we need to find out what a negative result looks like and the way we do that is we make a control test tube and basically a control test tube will have deionized water in the purpose behind that is so that we know what a negative result looks like because deionized water does not have carbohydrates does not have proteins does not have fats therefore it will produce a negative result so I'm going to take my deionized water and fill up three test tubes uh, just so we can see what the control would look like what a negative result looks like so I filled up the three test tubes with deionized water of course deionized because it has nothing else in it and I'm going to add Benedict's into one Biret into the other and ethanol into the other one just to see what a negative result looks like so there is a negative Benedict solution test it is blue in fact what I should do with this one is put it in some hot water because that's exactly what we're going to do so I'm going to show you a negative result when putting it in hot water uh, so I've just put some water in a kettle and I'm going to let it come to a boil then I'm going to place that boiling water into a large 250 milliliter beaker and then I'm going to place our negative test into uh, the beaker and the reason is is because that's exactly how we test for sugars so it's coming to a boil i'm going to pour it into the beaker now so i've placed that uh the, the boiling water into the beaker taking my benedict's uh negative well it's just deionized water in there so i'm going to place that in there see if there's a color change of course it has no sugar so we shouldn't expect a color change the next one i'm going to use is biuret solution i'm going to place it into the distilled water and of course nothing should happen because it has no proteins so i've just placed that uh, into the distilled water and it remaining blue just like the initial solution finally i'm going to test the distilled water with ethanol and i'm going to pour some ethanol in using a pipette and see what happens and i've just added the ethanol via a pipette and it is absolutely clear just as the ethanol was to begin with and so was the water so it's clear so those are negative results now i want to show you how to do a test for each one and again just looking at this um, negative test for the benedicts it is still blue no change right so what i'm going to do i've got three empty test tubes and i'm going to take my solution of cereal and pour a little bit into each test tube you don't need a lot so i'm going to use a clean pipette to take up the cereal solution so here it is here's my pipette full of cereal solution and i'm going to add it into here now you don't need to add a lot into there so just a, a few drops will do and a few drops in the next one and then you can go back and fill up your cereal solution you don't need a lot so that's my third one with my cereal solution what i'm going to do now is i'm going to label them up so i know that it's cereal and i don't get confused just in case I'm running more than one experiment at a time. Uh, so I've labeled them up, cereal plus Benedict, cereal plus uh, Biret, and cereal, cereal plus ethanol. So I'm going to add the Biret Benedicts in first. So there it is, I've added the Benedicts. Now I'm gonna put this into a beaker of hot water as I previously did. So that's in there, I'm just gonna leave it in there, see what happens over time. So with my second solution, uh, I'm gonna add the biuret to the cereal see what happens so that has stayed blue which means that it's a negative test and finally i'm going to add ethanol to this and see what happens and if you look here uh, it's gone cloudy which means uh, that there is fat present uh, within the cereal that we used 
So looking at the sugar test, it seems that the cereal has no sugar in it, which is a bit weird and a bit unexpected, but it could be that I just haven't left it in there for longer. So I would set all of these up, labelled and named, at the beginning. Okay, finally, just to summarise, what are the positive results for each one? So the positive test for Benedict solution, which is testing sugars, is that it turns from blue to green to orange to brick red. Now, the, the colour that it changed to shows whether it has a lot or a little sugar. It doesn't give you an amount, but it shows that this is, um, has less sugar, this has more, and this shows that it has the most sugar. So it's a semi-quantitative test. That means it kind of tells you the amount without being specific about it. The Biuret solution, which is a test for protein, turns from blue to purple. And the ethanol, which is a test for fat, turns from clear to a white emulsion. So the ethanol. Now you have to be able to say what the starting colours are and what it changes to. There's no point just writing the changes because you need to know what it changed from. I hope this helps.